we're ready to dive into all the insanity in this week's episode of Amphibia. But first, we have a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by PureVPN, a one-solution VPN that covers all your needs ranging from becoming anonymous, surfing safely while traveling, playing games, to securing all of your personal data. PureVPN secures your connections on all your devices with easy-to-use apps across all major platforms, alongside 10 multi-logins, so you can use it with freedom on any devices you want. PureVPN has a base consisting of over 3 million users and accessibility to over 6,500 servers, and keeps you secure no matter where you are with public Wi-Fi protection. It helps you find a variety of online deals with lesser prices by connecting to certain regions, like plane tickets. It also offers dedicated IP from 7 different countries if you need a stable static IP for yourself, which makes activities like working from home and gaming easier with a more seamless connection compared to a shared IP. Get 81% off on a 2-year plan with an early Black Friday deal and experience all new Pure VPN, all new and easy to use apps and much improved performance. Just $2.04 a month only, or £1.75 per month only for the two year plan, plus additional discount if you use our code The Roundtable. Get secure and private access to the internet with Pure VPN. Amphibia Season 3, Episode 6, Mr. X and Sprig's Birthday, gave us an introduction to a stylish human antagonist who's oddly intimidating, while giving Anne what's likely the only chance to spend one of Sprig's birthdays with him. With Sprig's birthday serving as a casual, fun episode that didn't really give us too many details to unpack story-wise, we're only going to be going in-depth on Mr. X. But I do want to share some quick thoughts and observations on Sprig's birthday, so it's not left out entirely. I thought this episode was hilarious. I'm having just as much of a blast as the crew behind the show with all the jokes they can roll out on Earth. Lord, send me a sign! Hey, have you guys heard the one about the lady who probably just made a really bad decision? Seriously, that career bit got me. It was sweet to learn of a new amphibian tradition with the mud crown, though it begs the question of if no one cared enough to make Wally one in the shut-in. It was also very interesting to see Anne resort to Sasha's knack for aggression as she grew frustrated with herself trying to give Sprig a birthday to remember. Very intentional parallels to Reunion here. Sasha's influence hasn't been scrubbed off of Anne completely, and until they reconcile back on Amphibia, I'm not sure if it will. Anne's trying so hard to not think about Sasha or Marcy that their presence in her life is coming out in different ways. And last but not least, we finally got an answer to where Sprig's goggles came from. It was a gift from his parents before they died, a moment he can barely remember, but cherishes all the same. I also wonder if the Season 3 opening is going to be updated to include Sprig's new telescope, alongside other content, given that a lot of its visuals already happened in the first half of the season. Alright, that about sums up Sprig's birthday, and with all of that being said, on to Mr. X! Picking up immediately from the cliffhanger of Ant's Terminator, we're introduced to Mr. X and his assistant Jenny, masquerading in Los Angeles through means of an ice cream truck. Right off the bat, we get a feel for their personalities. Mr. X is very suave yet bubbly, while Jenny is more of a silent type, communicating exclusively through body language. Despite a lack of verbal acknowledgement towards Mr. X's compliments, Jenny momentarily becomes flustered and blushes. Already, I love this duo. But let's address the elephant in the room or more so, elephants. Leading up to the premiere of Season 3, Mr. X is often compared to RuPaul, sharing an uncanny resemblance to the celebrity. Come to find out, Mr. X is indeed voiced by RuPaul. The similarities in design were intentional. However, there's another major influence, beyond every government agent antagonist ever, that shines through Mr. X the entire episode, and that is one of the main antagonists of Dragon Ball, Frieza. Prior to the premiere of this episode, series creator Matt Brawley shared his promotional art, depicting Mr. X as Frieza in the Tyrant's hover pod, while Jenny assumed the role of a Frieza soldier, complete with battle armor. Anyone familiar with Dragon Ball can see the traces of Frieza within Mr. X. Personality-wise, not only are Frieza's narcissistic traits present, but also Frieza's habit of keeping a calm, eloquent demeanor that contrasts with a sense of humor that can be very unsettling at times. In terms of appearance, not only does Mr. X share Frieza's purple color scheme, down to the lips, but the shape of his bald head and various expressions definitely calls to mind Frieza's fourth form. So this character is more than just RuPaul playing an 80s villain who looks just like himself. He's an homage to one of Matt's favorite anime villains. Speaking of the 80s, if it wasn't already obvious, Amphibia Season 3 has been a gauntlet of tropes from this time period. Aliens in the fish out of water story, killer robots, actually going to the mall, and now government agents. Thus, we have Mr. X's very on the nose line. After Jenny identifies the planters as definitely probably aliens, and Anne's noodle arm as likely a human companion, he remarks, uh -huh. 
Sounds like some real 80s movie junk. What other 80s tropes do you think will pop up in the season? Let us know in the comments down below. In a fun little Easter egg, the kid outside the ice cream truck is dressed like Phineas Flynn from Phineas and Ferb. Though I guess COVID reduced budgets prevented them from getting Visit Martella in the booth for a cameo. Meanwhile, at the Boon Choi family restaurant, Anne's parents are riding off the high of their big battle against Cloakbot, ready to get their hands dirty again already. It's been fun seeing Mr. and Mrs. Boon Choi go through a little arc of their own throughout this season, going from confused, reluctant parents to supportive figures ready to join the fight. However, let's keep in mind they're just ordinary human beings. Mr. Boon Choi gets injured on a daily basis, which I hope isn't some form of messed up foreshadowing on the cruise end. These two are still very much in mortal danger against any of Andreas' forces, way more so than Anne or the Planters. I also noticed that there's a note for an Uber Eats order in the kitchen. Neat little detail. I'm glad to see businesses thriving. Anne takes the planners to their first movie, passing by numerous posters when arriving at the cinema. One of these posters is obscured a bit, but it seems to be a nod to 80s movies, once again acknowledging this season's abundance of references towards them. However, I notice that the poster for Spy Guy 12 features a man who vaguely resembles the Elder that's more or less a human hop-hop in the season 3 opening, though there are notable differences in design. But it still has me curious. Is this foreshadowing the upcoming Hollywood hop-hop episode? I mean, homie even has a cane. Is Hop Up going to be able to break into Hollywood because he's mistaken for this little dude who can get easily mistaken for him? I also gotta shout out Spider in Your Home and Fast Rat. Jabs at both the MCU Spider Man films and their knack for including home in the title of every film, at least for this particular trilogy. And Fast Rat, of course, referencing the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and Sonic's horrific design before getting a much needed overhaul. Mr. X arrives at Tie to Go and gives us a casual yet intimidating interaction to Mrs. Boonjoy, as this man reveals he can speak a little bit of Tie himself. Meaning, the Boojoys can't just talk about Anne or the Planters in his presence incognito. He's going to have a decent idea of what they're talking about. And that spells out danger. And the Planters must have gone to an AMC, as we have an extremely relatable gag surrounding the abundance of trailers that are attached to a movie nowadays. And now, for what you've all been waiting for. Another trailer! 20 minutes of trailers, and you people call yourself civilized. And playing into Sprig's ADHD coded traits, he has a bit of a sensory overload in the theater due to its incredibly loud sound. Also, the service on Anne's phone is DTNA, which is not only a parody of AT&T, but presumably an Easter egg towards Disney Television Animation, which is of course the studio behind the series. Anne's grandmother also makes a brief appearance over FaceTime, with the classic grammar remark of which was wholesome and has me hopeful that we'll encounter more of Anne's family before we return to Amphibia. Of course, it wouldn't be an 80s homage if Mr. X wasn't equipped with an ungodly amount of accessories. Just in this episode alone, we witness the ice cream truck's ability to transform and maneuver around traffic. He gets around on Heelys, like anyone with a true eye for fashion. He carries a stun gun that he's very eager to use. And there's even a laser up in his watch that he uses to escape the janitor's closet. This guy is full on Inspector Gadget, and I totally expect more tricks and technology up his sleeve once he returns in future appearances. And within this first appearance, Mr. X has already uncovered the true identity of the planters as giant talking frogs, due to his unmasking of Hop Hop. Which makes me kind of worried for Hop Hop, as not only does he have an alarming amount of death flags, but one of the earlier instances of foreshadowing for such a death flag features a frog identical to the elderly planter moments away from dissection in Anne's classroom. Couple that with Anne's fears of the planters getting taken in and dissected by the government in the new normal, Mr. X's encounter of Hop Hop in particular could spell certain doom. Mr. X appears excited by the idea of the planters being frog people. He's undoubtedly fascinated by their mere existence, but he still suspects them to be a threat. Extraterrestrial beings who are here to carry out a sinister agenda, thus calling in the troops for backup. With Mr. X's assumptions, I have no doubt that Anne will end up caving and filling the FBI in on Andreas's impending invasion, likely in a scenario where she has to clear the planters' names. Cornered in the bathroom, Anne and the planters are ready for an all-out brawl against the FBI, which I almost would have liked to see, but instead, the gang is rescued by the Boon Choice swapping the gang out with normal Earth Frogs, which causes Mr. X to become a laughingstock among other agents, although he doesn't seem phased by it at all, tuning out the laughter to inform Jenny that the chase is just getting started, and he's ready to have some fun with it. I'm pumped to see Mr. X again already. This man was an absolute delight to watch. As the episode comes to a close, Mr. and Mrs. Boontray recap their grandiose plan to save everyone, which concludes with the silly reveal that they put a tracking device on Hop Hop while he was sleeping. 
instead of, you know, keeping tabs of Anne's location through her cell phone like a normal parent. But hey, I guess you gotta know where your interdimensional house guests are too. But this makes me wonder if the tracking device on Hop Hop will come back into play down the road. Like if the planters do get abducted by the FBI, will the tracking device be the thing that has Anne find them? We'll just have to wait and see. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What did you think of this episode? Did it meet your expectations? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AltrickVox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!